Hey, what's up everybody, Sibiu here. Um, I have never had in my entire life this conversation. Hey Siv, uh, would you mind praying for me? Uh, I'm struggling with greed. Never. Uh, think about it. When's the last time you have had someone confess that they're greedy to you, right? Uh, because greed is so elusive. Like it, it sneaks in into our lives. And, and before we know it, uh, it we find ourselves having this weird divide between us and God and even us and other people. Because greed has a funny way of getting in when we least expect it. Why? Because as John Owen said in his book, The Mortification of Sin, you must be dealing with sin or sin will be dealing with you. You see, the, the reason why greed can sneakily get into our souls and into our lives is that we are so quick to find it out there. Where when other people are doing stuff, we're so quick to deal with the greed we see in them and very slow to see the greed that is snuck up in our own lives. Psalm 24 verse 1 says this it says the earth is the lord's and everything in it that includes everything in in other words god is the owner and we are the stewards god is the one who gives he's the one who gives good gifts to us the problem is when we start to believe that we are the owner you see, when we start having that belief that we don't receive good gifts from God and we reject Him and we become the owners, greed is not too far. Because you know why? When we start believing that we are the owner instead of God, we will believe that we need to have more in order to be more. That, that in order to be something to other people, even to ourselves, we need to gain, pursue more of stuff so that we might have a identity. Now, be before we even get into this very brief message, I want you to know that there is nothing wrong with wealth and there is nothing wrong with being wealthy. It is the love of money that is the root of evil. It is not money in and of itself. And money and wealth and all those things are good, but the love of it, when our hearts are, are driven by it, that's where greed comes in and that's when we find ourselves in all kinds of evil. So what is greed? Greed is the excessive pursuit of material goods, the desire for material wealth or gain, ignoring the realm of the spiritual. It can also be called covetousness. Now, I want to look at three specific words that if you might find yourself saying these words quite repeatedly, you might be grappling with or dealing with the deadly sin of greed. So here's the first one. Greed always says mine. Greed always says more. And greed always says maybe. So mine. Greed doesn't just want more but greed wants more for itself, right? We don't just want more of whatever that thing is. We want that thing for ourselves. We want more of that thing for ourselves. We want to hoard it, you know, right? We want to keep as much of it as possible, right? Because if I don't have it, I've lost something of who I am. James, in the New Testament, beautiful book called James, James 5 verse 1 to 5, says something quite interesting. James is speaking to this kind of people who are greedy and he uses some strong, harsh words, but he says some deep truth. James 5 verse 1 to 5 says this, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evidence against you and you will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back from them by fraud, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self 
indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in the day of slaughter. What is James saying? He's speaking to a people who are self-indulgent. So much so, they have silver and gold that is corroding in their shelves, whilst the poor harvesters and laborers are suffering because the owner has not given them their wages. Why? Because he wants to keep all of that to himself. Not only does he want the benefit of their hard work, but he wants to withhold their wages from them so that he might have more for himself. It is to these people that James says, you better watch out. See, that, that it's not only your silver that's corroding away, it is your soul that's being corroded by greed. Interesting enough, here, here's what I want you to also see. You see, greed is not just the pursuit of obtaining more. Greed is also being in a structure that you know unfairly takes from the poor in order to give to you, right? It, it disadvantages somebody else, uh, right? So that you might be advantaged at their expense. If you are in that kind of system and you are agreeing with it, you might be greedy. You, you might be wanting more, but you want that more for yourself. You don't care about the poor. You care about yourself. Secondly, greed always says more, right? You, you don't just want more, but you are addicted to more. You must have more. You must have more now. You, you don't want to have more later. You must have it now. So you're going to do whatever you can. You're going to cut whatever corners. You're going to spend a, a crazy exorbitant amount of hours at work, regardless of the time you spend with your kids and your family, taking care of your health and all those things. You are going to get that more now as a matter of urgency, more than anything else in your life, because you must have more. Luke 12 verse 15 says this, Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. You see, Jesus in this text is trying to encourage people by saying, If you think that life is made up of accumulating more, you've missed the whole point of life. In fact, if you think that life is made up of an accumulation of possessions, you might be swimming in a sea of all kinds of greed and you need to watch out for that. Thomas Fuller says this, he says, riches enlarge rather than satisfy appetites. That the more you have, the more you are addicted to having and having becomes your life. Thirdly, greed doesn't just say mine, it doesn't just say more, it also says maybe. What does this mean? You don't just want more, but you fantasize about what that more will get for you, what that more will mean for you, right? So, so you, you move from getting the material thing, but you move from worshiping the material thing. It begins to define who you are when you have it. You see, this is what A.B. Simpson says, as long as you want anything very much, especially more than you want God, that thing has become your idol. You see, the maybe that I'm talking about here is this, it's like, Maybe if I get that car, maybe if I get that house, maybe if I, I get that kind of income, then maybe I will be something. Maybe they will think I am something. You see, that's when we've moved from the material world to a worship world. When, when, when we now we are worshiping the material things because it gives us a sense of worth and identity. See, that, that is a place where we no longer are worshiping the giver, but the gift. That is a place where we care more about riches than righteousness. Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21 says this, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, 
there your heart will be. You see, here is the good and bad news, is that your heart follows your treasure. If you change your treasure, your heart will be in a new place. But if your treasure is money, if your treasure is money and not God, then your heart cannot help but be greedy because that's where your heart will be. But the good news is that because of the gospel, we can uproot the treasure of money and we can treasure Jesus. We can treasure God and our hearts would follow there instead. So very quickly, what is the solution to greed? Well, one, you need to learn to boast in God and not yourself. See, if, if you're constantly boasting in yourself, then you need to accumulate more in order to back up your boast. But if you're constantly boasting in God, you need to trust more. You need to trust Him more. You need to depend on Him to show up in, in grace, in power, and in provision. Secondly, you need to be generous. Be generous, right? You, see, if, if the way we store up riches on earth is by hoarding and keeping for ourselves, then the way we store up riches in heaven is by generously giving. It's by sacrificial giving. And, and I want you to see that sacrificial giving is not just an investment towards heaven, but sacrificial giving is the disciplining of our hearts, that our hearts would be protected against greed. So let me end with this thought. See, if you want to direct your heart away from the love of money to the love of God, you need to remember this. We only give because we've been given that Jesus gave of himself. He, he abdicated all his privileges so that he might give himself and we might have abundance of life because of his sacrifice. And because he's done that, we are now empowered to do through our lives that which he has done in our lives.